Hey everybody, happy Monday, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. Welcome to Cocktails with the Queens. I am back with my girls and we're gonna have a great time tonight. We're gonna talk about everything that's trending in social media and on the news. And later on in the show, we're celebrating the last week of Herstory Month, of Black Herstory Month, with the Chief Executive Officer of Essence, Caroline Wonga. And you don't wanna miss that interview because she is doing her thing. All right, let's get to the show and get to the Queens. What's up, Lisa Ray? How you doing? Girl, I am here. I got my tea. I'm back to my original. <laughs> you look got pretty. We telling the tea. Thank you. I am, you know, still, you know, in the midst of mourning. Of course, we have not had the, when they say celebration of life, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. I feel a certain kind of way about that because, you know, some people like it's a celebration. And it's like, what's to celebrate? So I'm half and half on the fence about that. But doing the show and being with you all and you guys, you know, you've been my sisters for the last three years, three seasons, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Almost four, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, this, this feels, you know, like home, you know, and definitely, you know, Selena. First of all, she been checking in every day and sending something every day, inspirational. And I know that she's been here before, you know, she knows about this type of pain, you know, losing a parent. So she's more, and, and so, so does, um, you know, um, Vivica as mm -hmm. well. And, but I wouldn't wish this on nobody and only time will heal. So I'm going to drink to that. Well, Lisa Ray, um, it's been a pleasure the last few years getting closer and seeing your face every Monday night. And then sometimes, yeah, I don't know this, but sometimes we sit on the computer and, and, and keep the Zoom going and we've all cried to each other about things in our lives. And I think that's even the most special part about this show. Like we put on a show for y'all, but then we're there for each other. And when we go off air and we've had some real discussions yeah. I think a couple weeks ago, I was boohooing with, uh, with, so, with, with, with all of us. With all of y'all. Okay. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and, and I love that. Like, we don't have to see each other every day or talk every day, but when we do, it feels very real. And it so. matters. And it matters. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, you, you know, you don't never know what you need until you need it. Mm -hmm. And when it's a time like this and it happens, and then you're so thankful because I'm so appreciative of just, you know, just people just coming by that I didn't even think would come by mm -hmm. or I felt like I didn't even need them to come by. But when they got there, it was like, thank you. You know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just still just. Well, it's like you, you kind of have to put on this act of being strong for what we do. Right. And, and just in life in general, especially being a black woman. So allow yourself to, to not have to be strong. You don't have to be, you know, and Selena, shout out to you. I want to introduce you. Uh, welcome Selena Johnson to the show um, for, for reaching out and y'all have, you know, you've been there before and I, I'm sure that means a lot coming from someone that, you know, that's been there. So you were a good sister. You were good. Well, you know, I try to be there for all my sisters, you know, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I understand what Lisa Ray is going through. Um, and so it's, it's very, you know, you have to be very delicate, you know, but you also, I just want her to know, you know, I just want you to know Lisa Ray that I'm there. So I'm pressing. And sometimes you don't have to be like, eh, you know, but just letting someone know that you're present and that if just in case you do need anything, you know, that person's there. So, and you, and, you know, uh, same yeah. thing for you, Claudia, you know, when you go through your stuff, honey, I'm right in the phone, like, Hey girl, um, <laughs> <laughs> you okay. You know, So, so um, that's just, you know, that's just who I am. So I we care about people other you know and it's like even people like I said people that I didn't think that was you know that we weren't you know that close of friends mm -hmm. they showed up and they were sending stuff and and you know and I never really been this close and involved and and, and you know so I was like what they sending stuff for but it's sending things like you know when people send food it was just like paper goods you know mm -hmm. and cups and plates and napkins and 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 soda and, and juice and you know and then and, and I try to keep my mind positive because I also thinking about the people that you know wasn't there ain't there didn't call didn't send a flower didn't see my mama didn't know my mama whatever I'm all over the place you know what I mean so my emotions is definitely going up and down but 
when I have to do the show, like you said, Claudia, it's time to show up and be presence amongst my other queens that uplift me. So, you know, ladies, thank you. <laughs> and, and, you know, this is the kind of show where it's okay if you break down and cry on the show. Okay. And there's no judgment. We've all done it at least once on the show. Uh, many times. <laughs> We, we done cried, we done got cussed out, cussed yes. each other out. We done been mad at each other, been blocked each other, came back. Then fat and, friends and in love again. Right? Foolishness. Hung out on islands and, 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 I, and I love that. Um, so Vivica is having some technical issues right now, but oh wait, is she back? Is she here? Yeah, Vivica, are you there? She's there. there. Hey, Vivica. Welcome, Vivica A. Fox. Oh, Vivica, you're on mute. Hey, y'all, hey. I knew you was gonna find a way to make it happen. How you doing? Girl, what I'm telling you, I have been up and down my stairs twice. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I don't know if it's the weather or uh, what's going on in, in my neighborhood because, you know, California have been having this crazy storm that has lasted for like a week. And for some reason, the usual place where I do in my office, um, I wasn't able to sign on. It kept kicking me off, kept kicking me off. So apologize for my lateness. I'm on a little CP time, but I'm here, y'all, with my usual Pinot Noir. <laughs> all right. Well, we I think we all drink a little something tonight. Selena, what you got in your cup? Oh, just a little bit of vodka and lime juice, trying to keep it cocktail with the queen, but diet, you know, <laughs> trying, to, trying to keep it light, but still on a cocktail side. So. That's right. And Lisa Ray, you got anything extra in that cup besides tea or is it just tea? Girl, just the tea. But the you know tea. Me. <laughs> Uh, I got a little vodka and uh, pineapple juice and actually I have, like I said, a little vodka, a little, I'm sorry, a little bit of cra pineapple juice and a lot of vodka. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try to be. Why tonight, Claudia, do you have a little bit of pineapple juice and a whole lot of vodka? Girl, you know, we talked a little bit, but really it's about my move. I close on my house and yeah, yeah. So I've just I been like, man, I had to write a lot of checks today. So I'm a little bit stressed. I, I had to buy a lot of stuff, a new, you know. So it's it's been a lot, but it's it's a good thing. It's all positive, so it's good. good. It's beautiful. The house is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so excited for you. Getting a new home is just so much fun, and you get to decorate and do all this fun stuff. But it is absolutely gorgeous. Her house is crazy. I'm like, okay, girl, when we come to Dallas. <laughs> oh yeah, I got I got three bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs, so y'all have rooms to stay. So yeah. we're gonna okay. do it. I heard you say it. Okay. Well, as long as you as long as you cooking, Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray cooking. <laughs> well, I'll be off in that kitchen. That's therapeutic for me. And I could use and eat all that right about now. So absolutely, you got something coming from me. Any oh. breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh, oh. Open invitation to all okay. of you. All right, ladies. Let's we have a lot to talk about today. Uh let's get into the show. Uh Brittany Griner and her wife Sherelle received a standing ovation after making a surprise appearance at the NAACP Image Awards over the weekend. Sherelle thanked everyone who fought hard to bring BG home. Griner also noted, I want to thank everyone and let's keep fighting to bring home every American still detained overseas. Now, this is one of the first public appearances that Griner has made since being released from a Russian jail in a, um, in a prisoner swap back in December after spending nearly 10 months in custody. Now, she also attended Super Bowl 57. Uh, were you ladies excited to see Brittany Griner make an appearance at the NAACP Image Awards? Selena, let's start with you. Yes, I was extremely excited. I was I was very, I mean, amongst the millions of people who were probably extremely disheartened that she was over there for those 10 months and away from her wife. And, you know, I was just so, I was so upset about the whole situation, but I was so happy to see her um, smiling and here, you know, at the NAACP awards and with her wife and them being happy. I'm so happy that she just signed a year contract with her team. Vivica, what's the name of the team? That Phoenix she, Mercury. Um, Phoenix signed. Mercury. She's back with the Phoenix Mercury. I can't wait till the season starts. Um, I can't wait to see her play. And I love the fact that she's here and she still cares about the Americans that are still detained overseas. So that, you know, the fact that they're still doing work to get them to come home. So just the bomb, you know, you know how black women do. We just get it popping all around. That's right. Vivica, what are your thoughts? 
I was absolutely thrilled. Like Selena said, that big old smile, Cheeto smile that she had on her face when she walked out. Um, I, I thought that I was going to miss her dreads, but I really like this new look uh, that she has until she's waiting uh, on her dreads to grow out or if she does grow them out. Because you know, a lot of people say that when you cut your dreads, it's getting rid of a chapter and mm. um, that you release it. So she probably released those 10 months uh, being imprisoned, wrongfully imprisoned. And it just warmed my heart. Her and her beautiful wife, they look so happy. Mm -hmm. And so welcome home, BG. Going to make all of this money that's available to you with the books, the movies, playing in the WNBA. The, 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 the attention and the stands are going to be so full watching. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword that, you know, they're going to be there to see her, but I love the attention that she will be bringing to the WNBA that's well-deserved. I want right. to go. I want to go to the game. Oh, I'm going to the games. Oh, yeah, I'm going. Let me know. I want to go hey, to the game. I will fly wherever it is at. I'm going. Okay, let's go. You know what? I'm going to pick a real good game, too. Like when they play the Las Vegas Aces. Cause that's Ooh, let me know, honey. I'm going. Girl, that's going to be her and Candace Parker and Aja. Oh, that's going to be good. Oh, that's going to be it. Okay, so we're going. We're going. Just let somebody say I'm there. Did somebody say Vegas? I'm there. Hello. <laughs> Lisa Ray, what's up? What you think about this? She's finally home and back, like back in the mix, like nothing ever happened. Yeah, and that's the part I love, you know, because we do know that when you've been through something so traumatic as what she has endured over there in these small cells, being as tall as she was, that, you know, her coming back and gracing the red carpet is to show that, yes, you guys knew what I went through, but I wasn't broken and I'm here. I'm not only here representing myself and my union, but for our people and for me moving forward with my life. I think showing that shows a lot of uh, of people out there that you can be resilient. You know what I mean? That you can absolutely go through the trenches and it's and it changes you in a way in which you become so focused. So I'm excited to see what she's going to do on the court as well and how we are going to rally around and support her because. I know there was a certain amount of doubt in her mind of, hey, it's two months, it's four months, it's six months. When am I getting out? What are my people doing? What is America doing for me or whatever? But we got her back here and I know that she is just like, and so are we. So let's rally around and show that love. And, and what an example and lesson in, in faith. You know, it, it was like a year ago that we're like, is she ever going to get out? Is she going to do oh, eight yeah. years, 10 years? And it seemed like, like all hope was gone. And and to see her get back to the States, bounce back, mm -hmm. just I, I bet she has such a different appreciation of life. Not to say that she didn't before, but of all the blessings in her life, like imagine how she is probably every day is like amazing to her because she's seen the other side. You yeah. know what I mean? When you get things yes. taken away from you and you have to like, you realize a warm shower is Girl. A, a comfortable mattress, a clean pillow, sheets, clothes that fit you. Right. You yes. know what I mean? Seasoning. Yeah. They had that little tiny little little bed that they was trying to fit her in that it was like, I mean, when you go, those Russian colonies are some of the worst imprisonment, and especially for women. You know, women figure out a way to make themselves comfortable, but that looked pretty hard, y'all. So that's why every day she's just like, you see her every place. That smile is a Cheeto smile. So welcome home, Brittany. Welcome back. You know, and uh, I hope you never have to go back to Russia. Okay. I hope support you so much this season with financial um, gains that you never have to go overseas again. Or a lot of the other women in the WNBA don't have to go overseas. That we support them and get the salaries so that they can all stay home and be with their families. Correct. I mean. I really hope so, that just to hear the top players get what the average NBA player, and I do get it's different, a, a huge audience that watch the men, but like basically care. not even a week's pay for a man is I what know. the top pay, like, will they get $230,000 for the whole year? It's the abysmal. whole season, yeah. It's the abysmal. Yeah. It's abysmal. Yeah, so, the, you know, that's why I said it was a curse and a blessing, but that sacrifice that she went through for those 10 months, God bless you, Brittany, God bless you. And what and we can do on, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, maybe that sacrifice is going to be the thing that tips the scale. Yes. Maybe there will be, you know, an eye opener in the WNBA and NBA, you know, to kind of bridge the gap so that the, the salary can be 
you know, extended in some way, because it's just absolutely ridiculous. Our women are at risk. Yeah. Going and I think that, you know way. what? I think that she's going, we're not finished hearing from her. I think that she's going to take this experience and do something. She's going to be a voice. She's Absolutely. Do yes. And, and speaking of a voice, what we can do to be a voice is to just tell a friend to support the WNBA because when those numbers go up in the ratings, they have no choice but to increase the advertising dollars spent. And, and that's going to cause, you know, it's, it's a cause and effect. We can't just blow it off and be like, oh, it was just girls or they can't play or whatever. That's no, they have we need to go. That's no, we need to go. Can I point out to something really quick? It's crazy how college uh, women's games are absolutely full. Uh, when it comes down to March Madness, I just want to know where do the fans go? Because the girls just go to another level. So just watch March Madness and see how full those games are. Yeah. And let's just make sure we bring that same enthusiasm to the WNBA that part all right y'all right now let's take a quick moment for a, a, a moment of black excellence for black history month sponsored by nissan let's take a look fox soul celebrates black history makers who have broken barriers and created change building a legacy with the foundation rooted in this country's history is mckissick and mckissick the oldest minority female-owned construction and design firm in the united states Today, McKissick and McKissick is run by its fifth generation descendant, Cheryl McKissick Daniel. I started this journey 30 years ago. And to think about the iconic projects that we've had the opportunity to work on, you know, it's a blessing. Cheryl and her team have worked on many billion dollar projects, such as the recent remodel of New York's LaGuardia Airport, the Oculus World Trade Center Transportation Hub, and the Barclays Center. Five generations ago, McKissick and McKissick was founded by a former slave who was a skilled brickmaker, Moses McKissick I. I think about the fact that his DNA and his blood runs through me. Carrying on her family's rich legacy, Cheryl McKissick Daniel continues to create the blueprint for the future of construction and design in America. Honoring Black History Month on Cocktails with Queens, presented by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on the most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. Once again, that moment in Black History was sponsored by Nissan. Lisa Ray, what do you think about Cheryl's success in doing such huge projects? First of all, girl, I believe in legacy. Show enough, because if you you come from and recognize that you come from that type of family that was the first of, and it has gone on and on and on and passed through your great grandmother and your grandmother, and now it's your turn and you get an opportunity to be able to strut your stuff within the family name and make bring wealth to your family and the generation to come, that is amazing and awesome because they always do it. We just don't. So the fact that she has sat down and said, let me figure out what, you know, what everybody else has done to keep this business rolling. And she has to be also smart enough and strong enough to be able to take all those people under her wing and have employment to be able to employ them because they got to listen to this black woman in charge. Um, all right. That's I love right. It. Selena, what are your thoughts? Just, you know, I echo uh, Lisa Ray, legacy, legacy, legacy. And, you know, just more confirmation of greatness in our culture and community. And I'm really, really happy that Fox Soul is, you know, has been doing this every week. You know, it's just, it's fantastic to keep learning stuff about this. Absolutely. And last but certainly not least, Vivica, what's your thoughts? This has been an absolutely wonderful Black History Month. I have learned so, so very much. So thank you, Fox Soul. And I concur with the other ladies. Keep leaving a legacy. Generation Next, don't forget the sacrifices that our forefathers have made for us to have amazing opportunities like we're having. Let's keep making it do what it do, y'all. Absolutely. And I feel like there's no area in industry and in, in, in business and development that uh, we can't get in and dominate if we put our mind to it. So ladies, you have another role model in a different area to go to, to be like. And uh, we salute you, Cheryl. All right. Speaking of Black excellence, coming up, we are celebrating Black History Month. With the CEO of Essence, Caroline Wonga. You don't want to miss this, lady. We'll be right back with Cocktails with Queens after this. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are celebrating the last week of Black History Month with the president and CEO of Essence. Please welcome Caroline Wonga. Welcome, hey, sisters. Hey, 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 how are you guys? How you doing? Yeah. Happy Black History Month. How about that? Okay. 
That's right. Thanks. Carolyn, how are you feeling tonight? Looking all fabulous with your very glamorous look. I'm loving the look and the, the oh, eyes. glam. Well, you know, we as sisters, you know, we, we're, we're good for reinventing things. So if you all watch the NAACP <laughs> Image Awards and see this headpiece, it's the same one because I didn't want to take it down because I don't want to take my hair down. So I'm just going to have it on all week and we're just going to bling our way through the week and then we'll fix it. That's up. right. I you know the glam. Fabulous. You know the glam is fire when you have like a really good looking. You're like, I don't feel like taking this yeah. eyeliner off. I'm gonna take this hair out. I'm gonna keep it for a few days. It's sat on top of a baseball cap and it had many lives. We're gonna <laughs> ride it out to Friday and fix it on the weekend. Yeah, okay, it's that. giving African Queen. It's giving <laughs> Ghana. It's giving <laughs> South Africa. It's. it's I giving, receive all that, all that as I as I go through yes. the week. And <laughs> she had her, her collar popped up like okay, but right. Oh, okay, Caroline, you went I from intern. Caroline, you went from interning at Target to spearheading wow. the number one media, technology, and commerce company dedicated to Black women and communities, which is amazing. Now, what inspired you to step into this role, and were you a bit nervous to take on such a huge responsibility? I don't think there's a word that describes how I was about the responsibility, and, and I appreciate the question because I think, you know, a lot of times when people are watching you make a career transition, they think you planned it. And so they ask you like, how did you do that? I'm like, let me tell you how it actually happened. And you might want to change your question, okay. right? And so for me, we're like, I became a mom before I became a legal adult. And that is such an important part of, of, of how I grew up because I never got like this young adult time to figure out who I was. I just had to be a mom. And so my career became directed by making enough money to take care of this little girl, which I know that many women can relate to that. And so the journey to come to Target was simply, I didn't want to go corporate. It was simply to just get to a job that would pay for college, right? Because I was going to have to do this alone. And so I had a wonderful career in Target that started an internship and I worked in five or six different businesses, then had the opportunity to step into what I would say is the closest role in corporate America to my purpose. So there's a point in time in my life where my purpose became really clear. And so I started to seek having that be my work, which is what led me into diversity, inclusion, and culture work at Target. And then to be honest with you, I found my authenticity in that job because I was like, they're going to find out that there's a whole bunch of stuff that I ain't being real about. And my job is to tell them to be real at work. So out of fear that I'd be found, right, I, I started to tap into who Caroline was. And what that turned into was somebody who was watching, right, me go through that transformation that said, if this is who you are, we want you to come and help be a custodian of this cultural artifact called essence and, and lead it through its next wow. phase, which I was honored to be asked. And I feel the full burden and obligation of that. And you don't say no when you're asked to do something that can change people's lives. You do it as an act of service. And wow. so I was privileged enough to have been asked and I take seriously the mantle that comes with the time that I will need to be in care of this cultural artifact so that the next person can take it to its next place. Because none of us want the world where it's not here. That's I not love that. Wow. Look, girl, wow. you ain't giving no speech, but you damn sure just did. Well, thank you. <laughs> I like that cultural artifact because Essence is yes. such a part. Like, we all grew up looking at Essence. Yes. We all grew up yes. wanting to go to the festival. And then when we got there, we we're like, we at Essence. You going to Essence this year, girl? You know, like, okay. it's just been a part of all of our lives. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And, and Caroline, just, you know, just listening to you talk about your, you know, your journey um, through Target and then being a, a mom very young and then all of this, a working mom in corporate America working your way up the ladder and now being the CEO of Essence, what were some of the obstacles that you overcame in the target chain that has, that you can say um, attributes to you being a CEO um, in Essence? And are you in like a position where you're like, um, do you find yourself in a predicament where you're like, you know what? That's going to be easy because I already went through that, you know, <laughs> while you're working in Essence, Essence currently. It's a, it's a fantastic question. And, and the way that I would answer it, and I think this is really authentic to how a lot of us as women live, was that, to be honest with you, my first 10 years of career at Target was just trying not to fail. It wasn't trying to win. Okay. Right. And that's a really honest thing. Right. Like some days I was living 24 hours at a time. Like today, the goal is to not be fired. Right. We agree. OK, good. like I don't care about none good. I just need to still have the check deposit. Right. And so my journey, I was at Target for 15 years. So from intern to chief diversity officer, it happened over a long period of time. And I will be really honest with you that that first 10 years I spent mimicking the people who I thought were doing the things that would get me success. 
because I just wanted to not be able to not not be able to provide for my child. What happened at one point, though, is when I was given the diversity and inclusion job, what it created was a moment of personal reckoning. Because I had to realize that now my job was to bring people in and make them feel like they could be themselves here. And I had about 62 and a half things that I was covering up. And I was afraid that I'm not going to be able to do this work if I'm faking it. And so I took the chance and it was a terrifying surrender to touch back with who Caroline was. Because remember, I didn't know me since I was 17. I used to go back and look at girls I went to high school with to see if they had a better job. That's how confidence I didn't have. And I'm sitting here as a 36 year old at the top of a $100 billion company. And I'm still looking back at what the girls did when they were 17. It's what happens with our trauma. And so when I had to do this in this job where I started was, Simply, as funny as this sound was, I cut my hair and started my locks. And somebody had told me I could never do that in corporate America. And baby, I scanned that badge the next day like they knew what I did last night. I was like, ooh, this is it. Because my, <laughs> my mom just thought I was a cashier target. They don't know what happens to corporate, right? So I didn't want it until I got fired. And so when I realized that although I needed to correct some people and how they chose to engage with me, like don't touch me without my permission or my head, the, the, the other pieces that started to happen was the more I brought little pieces of myself out, two things happened that gave me confidence. The first of those was I realized that the consequences are bearable. The goal is not no consequences for making those decisions. The goal is can you handle them? Mm. And what I needed to be within the organization was more important than whether or not I could take the hit. I could take a hit. I raised a child from 17. So let's trust ourselves. Okay. The second thing. Okay, Caroline just be dropping gems. Okay. <laughs> now, the second gonna... thing was yes, really simple. Yes. Yes. Super simple. The second thing was. If I am going to be in a job where it is my job to help people be their authentic selves at this company, I'm going first. No, I love that. That's right. If they fire me for it, then they don't want this to be true about the organization. My mm. production and my job went up about 50%. My performance went up about 50% because I'd spend so much of my day trying to be everybody else. Wow. I'm worried about what people were thinking about me. When that didn't become my concern and I decided that being fired was worth it because I was tired, what came forth was all of who I was and the purpose I was supposed to do in the world that just happened in the workplace. I was protected. I knew who my stakeholders were. People all of a sudden liked me that didn't want to speak to me. And for those who didn't like me, they just didn't have the guts to say it to my face. I'll take that. I got stuff to do. Tristan Lee in the comments says that uh, Caroline showed up as the fifth queen. And I know Vivica has a question. I just want to say this. That is very queen-like to recognize and, and a lot of self-awareness to recognize I'm really kind of calling it in just to survive and pass. And then I'm going to not do that anymore and step away from the comfort of passing and calling it in to really do this thing. And I could fail and fall on my face or I can soar. And clearly the latter is what happens. So kudos to you. Okay. Authenticity I wins. Expert in failure recovery. That's the other thing I learned. I learned how to make room for failure in my life. So I give myself five fails a day. And unless there's six, it's not a bad wow. thing. And what I accidentally became, because I chose to take that path, because otherwise avoiding failure wasn't working too easy for me as it does for nobody, I accidentally became a, a failure recovery expert. So I can fail up to six times a day for it to be a bad day, but I get up faster than anybody else. And that is where the game gets won. Now, now, on a recent interview on The Breakfast Club, you, you dropped another powerful gem. You discussed the importance of intentionality. I love this word. Mm -hmm. When it comes to partnerships with Essence, yeah. you said, but we are about making sure that Blackness is returned to greatness. And the first steps in that is not allowing anybody to come in and engage with us if they are not going to participate in the hard, difficult, no room for self-preservation work of standing in the gap for those of us that are Black. Tell us what you mean by that statement. It's a super simple thing. I had the opportunity to join this brand, and one of the things that broke my heart was how the community that owned it at the time and the partners that had engaged with it, specifically corporate sponsors, treated it like it was nothing. 
They used it for what it was good for. It was not being recompensed at the appropriate value. It was mm. not being recognized for what it actually delivered. And it was being used as a BOGO, you know, buy one, get one. It mm. was not seen <laughs> as fundamental within our culture, right? And we know Essence doesn't belong to me or anybody else. Essence is a member of this community. I'm just a custodian for a season. So when you start to mess with Essence, you messing with us. And one of the Thanks. repositionings we did as a part of this phase was to reposition why the Black woman is where Essence has a focus. Although we have other businesses like Afropunk and Beautycon and Studios, the Essence component was focused on serving Black women deeply, but we repositioned she's the CEO of home culture and community, not Black home culture and community, home culture and community. Therefore, the engagement with her is what makes any engagement complete. The engagement is not available if you're not going to have engagement with her at the right value. She's no longer a discount. She's not available for less than. She's not interested in that. And when we made that reposition, then I had to go to the corporate partners that had worked with this brand for 20 years. Some of these partners were getting stuff for free. I'm going to say it, say it, right? They were not paying the value of what the largest festival in the country by per day attendance delivers and one of the longest standing Black media brands and community were, right? Those things are very important. If we were white, those would be very expensive propositions. And so we had to do a lot of work to reset what is the actual value of the asset that you're having to interact with. But the more important piece that tied to that quote was, we are perfectly fine turning down the check for people who want us to be their Black History Month ROI statement or just want impressions. You cannot engage with the Black woman intermittently. She deserves more than that. You don't get one-year commitments. You need to be multi-year commitment. You don't get to partner with her, put her on a billboard in your office, and then say you did something. You have to walk her entire journey with her, and your goal has to be her greatness, not yours. And we had to reset with partners, and as much as people are afraid of that, it worked. Wow. And they did it. Let me say Congratulations. What I see in wow. you, I'm going to definitely mention, is that I see power and I see strength, I see that you have lived enough experiences that you have taken from some mistakes, your youth and having a child, you sound educated, you are a queen, you have style, I can tell that you have grace, I can tell that you have done the work and I want to say that you would be an excellent speaker for anyone to listen to, especially this generation, because they need to see women that they can relate to that's like you, that has gone through some things, and you are saying with your life, unapologetically, it's okay. So mm. for that, for me personally, I'm saying bravo and thank you. You are in the right place, sister. I received okay. that. Thank you. My question. Oh, you have always advocated for Black women to stand strong in their purpose on earth and to eliminate any from, you know, to eliminate any needs from any other group in society. Why is that important, especially in today's climate? Because I think our, we, we, have, we have a community that has been pilfered from and underinformed. And one of the things that has been a part of that is this idea that our greatness, first of all, never existed, which is a lie. There are things that were there that were true before we were disrupted with oppression that was intentionally intended to take information away from us about how great we were and what we were doing so that we could be conquered. You won't be able to do it if you let us stay connected because it was impossible. You had to disconnect us. And there's so many lies and misinformation within that. So when I talk about this idea of not needing anybody else, two main points are sitting in that. The first of those is reminding people of the greatness that they already own, right? Mm -hmm. Do not allow the way that the external world has been engaging with you to define what's possible, mm. right? They're doing what they want to do. That is not the same as what you're, you can do. Right. And how do we remind people about where within themselves, if they did nothing else, do they have enough to do the one thing? Why? Because I lived that life. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm a stat. Right. I'm supposed to be a statistic about single moms and all of these things. I'm I am a single mom and proud of it, but I'm a whole bunch of other things, too, because at some point I had the opportunity to tap back into why I was born. And I believe everybody is born with a purpose that is theirs to fulfill. And if they don't do it, the world goes without. It's that deep. Mm -hmm. The second piece we did with it. The second piece we did with it is actually connected to this thing called the Essence Festival of Culture that is the largest festival um, by per day attendance in the nation. And we said this, one of the things that's beautiful about that thing that's been around for almost three decades is that is not the place that we come to hang out. It is the place where Black joy is created and you get to take some home to go be a better Black back where you're at. 
And so what we do is we say that when we gather, everybody's welcome, but we don't have time to teach people how to engage with us in Black. You can come, but we're doing our thing. There's no room for accommodation. You get to be selfish and believe in your power and make your move. Then you can choose to invite people who can help amplify it. What I'm destroying is the idea that we can't move things forward without help from another group. We can move a ton of things forward by helping ourselves. Then we can invite them strategically to where we need them, but at the right value. We're not here to help people feel better about themselves. We're here to make ourselves great and they're welcome to participate in that journey. Otherwise- I know that's right. Friend. I yes. know that's right. Okay. Well, all of that, I, honey, all of it. <laughs> Well, I you didn't, you, you didn't ask for this, but I want to make you feel. I hope this makes you feel better. I I, do, I hope you watch the replay of this tomorrow because you're not able to see the chat like I'm watching right now. <laughs> and I tell you, the chat room right now, live on YouTube, is going absolutely insane over you. Like they're saying, you have employees that work for you saying how amazing you are. I could hear this woman talk every day. Um, I, 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 she needs to come on once a month. Please have her back often. Graceful, okay. loving power. Her eyeshadow, her look, her voice. <laughs> she is so smart. I could. I got to tell you this. Like it's like it's like a hundred percent positivity. Like it's. I, I want you to get your fly. I want you to read what they have to say. They are loving you, and 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 you have been an amazing guest. Now you you mentioned Essence, the Essence Festival, almost twenty seven years, uh, and and last year the festival had a huge return with, with Janet Jackson and Nicki Minaj, the Isley Brothers, Jasmine Sullivan, and so many more as headliners. Uh, I was there. It was amazing. Um, how are y'all planning to top the success of last year's event? Before we let you go. And two-part question. This ain't only for me. The fans want to know. Robin Lewis says, will we see the Queens? Oh, uh, oh, will we see the Queens at Essence this year? Ow, I'm just saying. Ow, let, me, ow, let me answer the second one first. Yes. Yes. Duly noted. Duly noted on the second question. Channel. Heard you. Got some stuff to talk about. Got it. Um, Let's go. So, so here's what I would say about the festival, right? And again, I think what I love about the opportunity to serve in this role, and, and when you talk about members of the team, like I just have the privilege of being the voice. There is a group of movement makers here that have been keeping this thing alive for 50 years and will keep it alive for the next 50 years. So shout out to the Essence team and the women that do, and, the, and those that are um, supporters of women that do the work that creates what the world gets to take. I just get to be the voice. They're the ones that are really doing the work, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't honor them in this. But as a part of that, we have this thing called the festival that belongs to us. It doesn't belong to Essence. This is our thing, y'all. Like to your point, when you say we go into Essence, that is a full sentence. <laughs> you don't need to say <laughs> nothing else after it. <laughs> right? You remember that episode of Abbott Elementary where she was like, I thought Essence was a weekend. She was like, maybe for you. Okay. <laughs> like, no, th this is a, this oh. is an experience. This is the refueling. This is going back to get what we need the rest of the year. And so the beauty of Essence Festival is we can plan everything, but y'all make it good, right? I know so that's right. Better start with you. But the second thing we're going to do for you this year, 50 years of hip hop. This is the 50th oh, oh, anniversary of hip hop. Oh, I will say not another thing. Oh, that is understood. Okay. So I'm not saying nothing else yeah, about girl. this year other than that. <laughs> Right? We about to be out here for all, the, all the decades. I might, I'm trying to find some cross colors. If somebody got some cross Listen, colors. Listen, the amount of gym shoes I'm going to have to wear is going to be come out in some of those things. But the, <laughs> we're going to lean into what is Black culturally relevant. This year is about Black culture and hip hop. And so why would we not do that? Next year, 2024, is the 30th anniversary of the festival. Oh, gosh. Mm. Oh. And you know, nobody does a birthday party like Black people. I know. Okay. Okay. And so I would just like to declare that we will start our 30th birthday with the 50th year of hip hop celebration. And then y'all need to come to the ultimate birthday party. Oh, absolutely. 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 That is Girl, ours. Birthday we all is on the 30th. 30th. So you we know I love the party. Because you know we we black people celebrate the whole year for one birthday day. <laughs> you know how we do it. And the whole birthdays. year is our birthday. I love it. Yep. And half birthdays. All that. <laughs> well, we there. We there. Well, Caroline, we we have been a complete joy and a powerful, Absolutely. powerful, powerful presence on this show. And uh, thank you for blessing us with your spirit and with your story and with your journey. And it's definitely inspiring to kind of step out on faith and to believe more in ourselves and not be fair, not be afraid of our own potential. So thank you so much. We will see y'all at Essence. I'm just uh, saying. You better get your rooms and your ticket from a legal 
place. It ain't my fault if your ticket don't stand because you bought a bootleg. That's all oh I'm saying. God. I'm not playing with y'all. Get it to the right place. But thank you, sisters. Thank you for pointing. Get your tickets to Jeopardy. Thank, thank you, Caroline. You so we will see you again soon. Bye. 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 What an amazing guest. Jim, what so, a gem. We are going to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to reserve my room at Essence. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Dwayne Wade's daughter officially changing genders. We'll be right back with this after this quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more after this. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. Guess who's going to Essence, y'all? Cocktails with the Queens, you going. Okay. <laughs> the poor lady. Say it so. That's right, the CEO, CEO president. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get into the story. It happened over the weekend, and I really was like, I can't wait to hear what the Queens have to say about this. So Dwayne Wade's daughter, Zaya Wade, has officially been granted a legal name and gender change, which is not the surgery, just to be clear. That is a changing on the birth certificate. Now, according to documents obtained by TMZ, a Los Angeles County judge signed off on Zaya's new identity, which states that she will receive a new birth certificate with her new name and gender printed on it. Now, just last year, Zaya's mom, Savon Funches Wade, submitted an objection to a Los Angeles County court that requested Zaya Wade wait until the age of majority to make permanent changes to her identity. Now, Savon also accused Dwayne, Dwayne of exploiting their child for financial gain. Once again, I have to reiterate, this does not mean any physical, this isn't sex change, this isn't operation, this is not hormones. This is a legal name change and the gender on the birth certificate being changed from male to female. Let's start with you, Vivica. What are your thoughts on this update? Um, I was surprised, to be very honest with you, because... I believe a decision of this magnitude should happen to a consenting adult. That's my opinion. Um, they have fought very hard uh, for uh, this ruling for her. Um, but in my opinion, I just believe that a 18, an adult should be able to make this decision so that in the future, there are no regrets and that no one is held liable for that. All right, I see you shaking your head, Lisa Ray. Let's go to you next. What do you think, Lisa Ray? Um, absolutely, I concur. Um, but this might be a little bit of my ignorance, uh, but I did not know, and I still don't know for sure, that you can get a new birth certificate and there's no sex change, and you are actually a boy, that on your birth certificate now, because it's just been granted, that you get to say you're a girl, but you're not a girl. How do you but feel about that? So I don't, I don't, I don't understand how that can even happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and how the mama can't have a say so with this kid that's still a minor. You know, so I'm well, I just gonna have to wait and see how this plays out because uh I think this is just a lot going on. I think that at such a young age, you're still confused about various things that is is it has happened to you and then that's going to happen to you that may morph and make difference in how you look at the future. I know the things that, you know, we've gone through and mistakes we've made made us go, oh, oh yeah, gosh, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. You know what I mean? I want to handle this differently. So I'm with Vivica. I feel like maybe you should wait a little while. You feel good about it now because it's new, it's exciting, everybody's talking about it, and it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? Um, but you may be absolutely sure at 18, you know what I mean? But uh, Or 21, I don't know. So I just got to wait and see what happens. Okay, Selena, what do you think about this? You know, I have a twofold mindset on this. I just, I'm, I'm kind of split down the middle. On one hand, I totally agree with Lisa Ray and Vivica in, you know, in regards to 18. Like, why can't we just wait till we're 18 to make this choice? I, it's only three more years. Um, and, and, and then in the other regard, it's like, okay, Dwayne Wade, you do have full custody. He did consult with the um, his what his ex wife first before he even you know fought to do this. This is what was in the um, the, the readings today, um, the the story that he did consult with her first, and that um, the mom she was more concerned about Dwayne Wade and and them using this situation for financial gain. Um, so I, I understand Dwayne Wade being like, okay, well I'm the custodian, I'm the legal parent. But I do agree with Lisa Ray and Vivica in, in terms of you don't know what you're going to feel 
at 21, at 18, at 25. So hopefully the, the change is changed back. You know what I'm saying? In regards to the um, birth certificate and, you know, those, you know, just logistics, you know what I'm saying? The sex change, however, that thankfully can't be done until she's an adult. However, I just lost my niece who was 15 years old, three days before Christmas. She killed herself. These children, and it's been something I've been dealing with that is absolutely abysmal. I've been dealing with that well, along with other deaths, but my 15 year old niece took her life in that community. She's not in that community, but she, I can't speak on it because I'm not, you know, I don't want to, that's not my place to speak on that. But I will say this, these children at 15, 16, 17, what they're dealing with in high school, the different pressures, the things that my son comes home and tells me is going on in the school is insurmountable in terms of pressure. And if your family can support you in any kind of way, and you go to school and you go out in the world and you have no support, it is imperative to have a strong foundation at home. And I think, and I just want to go out, I just think that Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle, you know, they're trying to be that foundation so that when she goes out into the world, she will always know that she's protected at home because this world, the, the rates of suicide are skyrocketing in, in the LGBTQ community. Well, not just the LGBT, the transgender community. So especially the young ones. So that's my concern. Claudia, what about you? What are you feeling? Is it something that maybe you would like to add to it as well? Or do you concur with us or you? You know what, though? I think that we have to go to commercial break right now. So um, yeah. I don't know if Claudia is frozen up on us, but we're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back, you guys. More Cocktails with Queens coming up. Darlings, welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. Our hostess with the mostest, Miss Claudia Jordan, is having a little bit of technical difficulties. It happens. I'm telling y'all, this rain and this weather going on, just having things going crazy, but we're still here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this Black History Moment that is sponsored by Nissan. Check it out. Black Soul celebrates Black history makers who have broken barriers and created change. I want to be unapologetically Black, and I want to be unapologetically a woman. I don't want to walk into rooms apologizing for who I am. Financial maverick Melody Hobson is changing the game of football as the first Black woman to be a part owner of an NFL team. In 2022, Melody teamed up with other investors in a $4.6 billion deal to take over the Denver Broncos. Melody will call the shot and make major business decisions for one of the NFL's most successful franchises. Melody is part of an historical sisterhood. Tennis icons Venus and Serena Williams are the first black women to become minority stake owners of the Miami Dolphins. From the boardroom to the football field, Melody's corporate experience as co-CEO of Ariel Investments and the chairwoman of Starbucks Corporation will bring strategic leadership to the Denver Broncos. Melody's high-profile role with the Denver Broncos puts her in a powerful position to open doors for more black sports ownership opportunities in the future. Honoring Black History Month on Cocktails with Queens, presented by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on the most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. Once again, thank you to Nissan for providing us with, with these great clips for Black History Month. We really appreciate you. Quick commercial break, and we're going to have a little bit of fun at the end of the show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. All right, everybody. Over the weekend, your favorite celebrities graced the red carpet at the 54th NAACP Image Awards. So it's only right that we play a fun game of hot or not. Y'all ready? Yes. All right, time is limited. So we're going to zoom through these things while the technology is acting right. Okay, first up, we have Zendaya. Was she hot or not? Hot. Hot. Hot on fire hot. Movie star. <laughs> She looked like a true movie star. And the, the, the hair, costume. the movement, everything, the colors. Everything. Million everything. dollars an episode she's getting coming up. Yay, All right. wow. That's my Next birthday up. twin, honey. Same day. Same day. <laughs> Next up, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Hot or not? Hot. Hot. 
Yeah. Okay. She's going to always give you African queen tribal yes. something. You know what I mean? People and her, were serving her. They were serving NAACP. Okay, this man continues to stay sexy from the Wu-Tang to the red carpets. Met the man, hot or not? Hot. He looks great. He looks hot. great. Scalding. Mm-hmm. And you know, like fine wine. Better with time. How? I love How? a man. Going backwards like yeah. Who's next? Love a man in a fitted suit. How? Angela Bassett, hot. Okay, always hot, hot or not? Always, yeah. I her like style. those. What is that? Her sleeves that that they're just the puff. Yeah, so that's cool. all the rage. Like that. That's a different. Shout out to her stylist, Jennifer. Yeah, hot. And it's white. I love it. Uh, of <laughs> course. <laughs> Next, we have Tabitha Brown and her husband Chance. Were they hot or hot. not? Oh, she hot. looks nice. Yes, yeah, yeah, beautiful. All smile, always hot. All right. Next up, Black China made a splash with the short hair and the orange dress, hot or not? Hot. hot. She, she was serving. Yeah. She looked exactly the best so I've ever me. seen her. She looked that amazing. That was such a refreshing, yeah. refreshing look for Black China. Hot. She looked amazing. Yeah, she looked amazing. I love when the girls that are usually super overly sexy and shown a lot, like that's a classic, that's a classy look, that V-neck and the high slit and the short yes. hair. She looked beautiful. Yeah, she Can I tell you this, Claudia, real quick for everybody on the red carpet? Thank you, God, for bringing class back. Right. They were last, serving, wasn't they? They were last serving but, in NAACP, honey. Last but not least, we have Tyler James Williams. Was he hot or not? He's been doing great this award season. Yeah. I like him. Whoever his style is, they're making him look like a gentleman. Kudos to him last night for Screen Actors Guild Award. You killed it. And I um, love all the colors that were that were displayed on this carpet. It was fantastic. I hope Black Hollywood continues this this classy streak because it is it is giving. All right, special thanks to Caroline Wanga for having us and hanging out with us. Uh, thank you for watching on YouTube. Stay tuned for Brutally Honest with Jasmine Brand. And y'all get your Essence Festival tickets because you never know with Queens, you'll see it by the panel. I'm just putting it out there. Y'all. Okay. Let's say it. Uh-huh.